Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the friend of the unfortunate, enemy of criminals. The mysterious, all-powerful character, a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind the strange mask in a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Blue Beetle is entitled Blasting the Dynamite Ring. A band of desperate underworld characters have started a reign of terrorism throughout the city. Their motive is wholesale burglary. Will they succeed in forcing the authorities to accede to their demands? Can they successfully defy the forces of law and order? Or will the Blue Beetle checkmate their efforts and bring their leader to justice? As our story opens, Patrolman Dan Garrett, a rookie cop who operates as the Blue Beetle, has stopped for a little early morning chat with his friend and advisor, Dr. Franz, before reporting for duty. Well, Danny, what assignment has the commissioner given you in this new drive? I don't know yet. I hope it's something exciting. <laughs> You'll probably get your wish. You and Manigan always get plenty of action. What do you suppose is back of these dynamitings, Doc? Three this week already. Mm, it's very strange. Fantastic, in fact. What can these racketeers hope to gain? Blamed if I know. Looks as if they were trying to scare the authorities into meeting some exorbitant demand of theirs. But surely the police can apprehend the ringleaders. Believe me, if I get a chance, I'll run them to earth. If I can't do it as Dan Garrett, I'll do it as the Blue Beetle. Who, so what's that? Sounded like an explosion over on the west side. Someone's up front in your store. I'll go see. Excuse me. Oh, hello, Doc. Is Dan Garrett here? Yeah, hello, Officer Manigan. Yes, Dan, he's here. He, he was just... Now, what's about... up, Manigan? Me and you have been assigned to the west side to investigate them explosions. I thought I heard one just now. That's right. Come on, I got the police car outside. Let's get going. Okay. So long, Doc. Let's go, Manigan. That furniture factory that blew up. Furniture factory? Yeah. I heard somebody say it was bombed. That's the fourth this week. Come on, Manigan. Let's see if we can help. There may still be some people in that burning building. Right off you, my lad. I'm going to search the cellar first. Take it easy down there, Danny. The floors overhead may cave in any minute. I'll have to take that chance. If somebody down here in the cellar... He's either dead or overcome by smoke. Give me a lift. I can't get down to you, Danny. The fire's between us now. Can you throw your coat down to me? Well, that's right. Wait a minute. Here it comes. You got it? Okay. I'm going to bring this guy up on my back. I'm using your coat as a hood. You better wait till I can get the fireman in here with the hoses. There's no time for that. I think I can make it alone. I'm coming down, Daddy. Wait for no, me. No, Manigan. No you both of us risking our lives. You stay there and grab me when I come up those stairs. Here I come. Take it easy, Daddy. Steady now, boy. You're almost up. Don't make it snappy. The floor's giving way. Here. Here's me hand. I got you. Look out, Daddy. <laughs> Yeah, he'll be all right. 
look. She's over in his eye. I sure is a brave cop. Yeah. Uh, Danny, Danny, are you all right? Good night. Did I get the old man out there? Oh, you did that, by. Thanks to you. I didn't do nothing. You've done it all. Mannequin, if you hadn't been there to give me a pull, I'd have collapsed right at the head of the floor. Well, well, now, you'll be all right after a rest and plenty of fresh air in your lungs. Here comes the ambulance for the old man you saved. Why don't you take a ride along with him? Maybe they'll give you a bed and a good meal, too, at the hospital. Well, I think I'll take the ride. That bed and meal can wait. I want to talk to that old man when he regains consciousness. He may give me a clue to that dynamite. Oh. Will the old man be able to furnish a clue as to the dynamite gang? Will Danny continue his investigation as patrolman Dan Garrett? Or as the Blue Beetle. Let's look in on the mayor of the city to see if we can discover what is back of these mysterious explosions. Telegram for you, sir. No, oh, thanks. Now, wait a minute, George. There may be an answer. Yes, sir. Hmm. If you don't have electricity shut off throughout the city tonight, something unpleasant will happen to you or your family. Sign the octopus. Say, what is this, a joke? If it is, someone has a perverted sense of humor. Why, this is preposterous. I never heard of anything so brazen. Uh, what are you going to do, sir? Get me the commissioner on the phone. Yes. Yes? Uh, get the police commissioner on the phone. The mayor calling. Thank you. Uh, you'd better have a bodyguard, Your Honor. Not for me, but for my boy. Since his mother died, he's had nobody but me to look after him. Hello, hello. Hello, commissioner? His yes. Honor, the mayor calling. Here you are, sir. Uh, hello, Commissioner. Hello, Mr. Mayor. What's on your mind? I want to read you a telegram I just received a moment ago. Uh, where is it, George? Oh, thanks. <clears throat> uh, listen to this, Commissioner. If you don't have electricity shut off throughout the city tonight, something unpleasant will happen to you or your family. And it's signed, The Octopus. Uh, that's bad. Who is The Octopus? As far as we can discover, he's a power in the underworld. Our best men have been working secretly to track him down. But so far, we've had no success. Well, I want you to assign one of your best men to guard my son. I'll assign Mike Mannigan on the job. He's the best I have. Good. I know him. Uh, what about you? You should have a bodyguard. Oh, never mind me. I can take care of myself. It's my son I'm worried about. Well, it will be taken care of, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Commissioner. As soon as you issued the necessary orders, I wish you'd drop over to my office. I'd like to discuss a plan of action to checkmate the Optimus and his gang. In the meantime, Dan Garrett has talked with the old man whom he saved from the burning building. He learns that just before the explosion, the old man, who was the janitor of the factory, saw a bearded man with a link disappearing up the stairs just outside the boiler room. Danny decides to keep an eye out for a bearded man with a limp. We next find him in the little apothecary shop of his friend and advisor, Dr. Franz. Then what do you make of it, Danny? I think it's a diabolical plan of wholesale robbery, backed by terrorism and blackmail. But I don't understand. How could any gang of thieves hope to... As I see it, the mastermind of this gang has a well-thought-out plan. First, his unholy crew terrorizes the city by a series of explosions. Yes. Then they plan to suddenly plunge the city into darkness one night. And while the blackout is on, they'll systematically rob jewelry stores, banks, and fur storage plants. What makes you think that? The mayor got a telegram today warning him that unless he ordered the city's power supply shut off, something unpleasant will happen to him or his family. But that's preposterous. I never heard of such unmitigated nerve. These men are desperate characters, and their chief is a cold-blooded fiend. Uh, what's the mayor doing about it? He's talked with the commissioner of police. The commissioner assigned Mannigan to guard the mayor's young son. He's also ordered every known gang hangout in the city raided. Every racketeer, big or small, is to be arrested, brought in for questioning. And what are you going to do? I'm going to put on my blue beetle armor. 
going to take a little trip down to the municipal power plant. I have a peculiar feeling the Blue Beetle will come to grips with some of that gang tonight. Out into the night, sped the Blue Beetle in his super dynamic speedster to save the city's power plant from destruction and prevent wholesale burglary throughout the city. From another point, a fast motor car filled with dark visaged men is speeding toward the same destination. Will they meet, or will one outspeed the other to prevent or commit a crime? As the Blue Beetle nears his destination, he sees another car pull up in front of the power plant. That's a suspicious looking car there. Hmm, several men are getting out. Tough looking bunch. There's one with a beard and a limp. That's my man, all right. And there's the watchman coming up to me. All right, boys. All right, now make it snappy. Ready me here. And be sure to suck me hard and tie me up so I won't be suspected of being in on this. Don't worry about that, Pop. We'll fix it for you. Well, here's the dynamo room. And here's the stock. Okay. Tie him up and put him over there in the corner. Come on, Slit Eye. Give me a lift with this bozo. Okay, Gibby. Here we go. Hey, Gibby. What did you do with that sledgehammer? Back of you. I'll be over to help you after we've got this. The Blue Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. Hey, there's the Blue Beetle. Give him a load of lead. Put down that sledge or I'll blast you. You and who else? I'll mow you down with this sledgehammer. Hold up, you guys. Are you liable to nick me? I can handle this smug. Along. Let, let me see you handle this one. <laughs> Go on, empty your guns, you fools. You can't injure the blue beetle. Now I'm coming after you, rats back there. Come on, let's beat it, Slit Eye. No, we gotta fight it out. You know the octopus. This blue beetle's only a guy in a masquerade costume. Let's get him, Gimby. Give me that wrench. Here we go. Give me that wrench, Slit Eye. Here is this blue old red on the blue. Your aim is bad, Slit Eye. You should have ducked my left first. But my aim ain't, Blue Beetle. Oh, gotcha that time, Blue Beetle. Come on, Muggsy, I got him. I got the Blue Beetle. Yeah, good work, Gimpty. That's tossing a hammer, all right. Yeah, you got him right in the eye. Boy, he certainly packs an awful wallop in that left of his. Yeah, you sure got a lump in your jaw. Hey, what do we do with him? He ain't dead. Tie him up and take him out to the island after we wreck this place. The octopus will take care of the blue beetle. Okay. Listen, slap some life in the slit eye there while I plant a bomb under that dynamo over there. Sure. Hey, slit eye, snap out of it. Come on, come on, come on. We're getting out of here. No, what happened? Did the place blow up? No, the blue beetle sucked you. Well, where is he? Lying there. Gimpy plugged him. Oh, good work. Where's Gimpy? Planting a dynamite under those dynamos. Here he comes now. Come on, let's go. I lit the fuse. It won't be long now. Here, here. Give me a hand with the blue beetle. Right. Let's make it snappy. I don't want to be around when a dynamite goes off. What about the watchman? He'll have to take his chances. We ain't got room for him. Okay. Come on, let's go. I cut a short food. happen to the Blue Beetle when the octopus gets him in his power? Will that be the end of the Blue Beetle? How can the police protect the citizens of this vast city against the depredations of this ruthless band of arch criminals? <laughs> 